All right, let's look at a couple of examples of the general response in RC circuits. Now let's first begin with this circuit and notice that instead of using a switch in this circuit, I'm using a source multiplied by the unit step function. So this is equal to zero for T less than zero. It's equal to 20 amps for T greater than zero. So let's go through and let's solve for this. So in this case, I want to find, once again, for VC, I want to find VC for T greater than or equal to zero, assuming, once again, steady state for T less than zero. So let's go ahead and let's solve this. And for T less than zero, what I'm going to get is this current source opens up. So for T less than zero, I'm going to find V zero. And so in this case, I'm going to ground this. This is VC. This is 10 I one. So that's the voltage of this node. I1, of course, is this current. That's 40 volts. And now I can go through and I can write my KCL equation knowing that the current through the capacitor is equal to zero for steady state. And so what I get is that 10I1 minus VC over five going in is equal to VC minus 40 over 50 going out. And if I solve, well first I also need the dependent source variable, excuse me, that's my KCL equation. And my dependent source variable equation is that I1 is equal to VC minus 40 divided by 50. And now if I solve for these, what I will get is that VC is equal to minus 4.444 volts. So that's my initial condition. Now I'm going to find, for my final condition, I'm going to calculate the final voltage of the capacitor. So in this case, the, 40, the 20 amp source comes back again. For T greater than zero, I've now got 20 amps. The current through the capacitor is still equal to zero. Still steady state again. And so now in this case, my KCL is that 20 plus 10 I1 minus VC over five is equal to VC minus 40 over 50. Same as the equation above, I just added the 20 amp source to it. I still have the same dependent source variable where I1 is equal to VC minus 40 over 50. And once again, I can solve these and what I'll get is that VC is equal to 106.7 volts and that will be equal to my final or forced value. Now I need to find tau and tau happens for T greater than zero. Well, in this case, I need to find the equivalent resistance across this capacitor. I need that equivalent resistance, REQ, which is just equal to the Thevenin resistance across C. First of all, if you're going to find the Thevenin resistance, all independent sources have to be zeroed. Voltage source becomes a wire. Current source becomes an open circuit. And now I'm left with two resistors plus a dependent source. Well, the only way to solve this, I have to use the, uh, I have to use the source driving technique. Can't ignore that dependent source. So instead, I'm going to do this. I'll put in a one amp source. I need to calculate VT. 
So we have VT above, and now I can go through and write my equations. So I'm going to find tau for t greater than zero, and in this case, my equations tell me that one amp going in plus 10I1 minus VT over 5 must be equal to VT over 50. That's my KCL. My dependent source variable is that I1 is equal to VT over 50. And I can now solve these, and I'll find that VT is equal to 5.556 volts, and therefore the equivalent resistance is equal to R, which is equal to 5.556 ohms. Nodal analysis, the evidence theorem. I apply that. I've got these. I can now plug them in to the general solution equation. And if I do that, what I will get is the following. Vc of t is equal to my final value times 1 minus e to the minus t over rc plus my initial value times e to the minus t over rc. Plug in my values for r, for c, for well, c was already given, for vo and vf. I plug those in and what I'll get is 106.7 minus 101.11 times e to the minus 0.9 t volts for t greater than or equal to zero. And there's my answer for VC. So here we see an application of the general response, the general solution. All right, I've got a non-zero initial condition and a non-zero final condition. But I just need to calculate three quantities, the initial voltage, the final voltage, and the value of R across the resistor for T greater than, for T greater than zero after the switching event. Okay, now from here, let's, Look at another example. And this one looks kind of familiar. It looks very much like one of the examples we did earlier. In this case, I've got the following. So in this case, notice I've got a voltage source 40U of T. This turns on after the switching event. I've got 90U minus T. This turns off after the switching event. So once again, I'm using the unit step functions. This is 30 kilo ohms. This is 0 0.5 microfarads with a voltage of VC, 60 kilo ohms. 20 kilo ohms, and a current I1 of T. Once again, we're going to assume steady state operation for T less than zero. And in this case, I want to find VC of T and I1 of T. For t greater than e, t greater than zero. So in this case, looking at this, we note that in this particular case, I've got two quantities. One is the voltage across the capacitor. I find that from the solution. So Vc is equal to V final times one minus e to the minus t over Rc plus V zero 
times e to the minus t over rc. I find that from the general solution. I then find I1 of t given Vc. So just as we saw before, work the voltage across the capacitor first, then any other currents you need or any other voltages you need, derive those given the capacitor voltage using your standard circuit analysis techniques. So once again, let's go through and let's solve this. So let's first, let's first solve for Vc of t. So for t less than zero, we're going to find the initial condition across the capacitor. So for t less than zero, that source is off. This source is on. This is a 90 volt source. So here's my circuit for t less than zero. I'm going to ground the bottom node. That makes this voltage Vc. And now I can go through and I can define the currents through these two other resistors and I can write my KCL. And so what I'm going to get is that this is 90 volts. So Vc minus 90 over 30K plus Vc over 60K is equal to, and I'm just going to stick with that direction, it's equal to zero minus Vc over 20K. And if I solve, what I get is that Vc is equal to 30 volts for T less than zero, which is therefore equal to 30 volts for my initial condition. So that's my initial condition, easily solved. Now, for T going to infinity, let's find the final condition. Now before the current through the capacitor was equal to zero when I wrote that KCL equation, it was in steady state. We're back in steady state, the current through the capacitor is still equal to zero. So in this case what I get is I flip around these sources, this source now goes to zero, it turns off for T greater than zero. This source turns on. We got the 40 volt, so now I have minus 40 volts at that node. And now I can go through and write the KCL equation for this. And what I get is that Vc divided by 30K plus Vc divided by 60K, both going out, must be equal to minus 40 minus Vc divided by 20K going in. And what I will get is that Vc is equal to minus 20 volts as T goes to infinity. And therefore, Vf is equal to minus 20 volts. There's my final value. Finally, I need to find the value of the resistance across this capacitor. What is REQ between those two points? Well, let's first go through, zero out that source. What do I have left? Three resistors in parallel. So REQ is just equal to 30K in parallel with 60K in parallel with 20K, and that's equal to 10 kilo ohms. That's my value of R. Now that I know that, I can plug in, and what I get is that tau is therefore equal to 0 0.5 microfarads times 10K, and that's equal to 0 0.005 seconds. I plug into the general solution, and what I will get is this.
So VC of T is therefore equal to my final condition, minus 20 times 1 minus E to the minus 200T plus my initial condition, 30 times E to the minus 200T volts. I can combine the, exponent the, the uh, exponential terms together and what I will get is this is equal to minus 20 plus 50 times E to the minus 200 T volts for T greater than or equal to zero. And there's my answer for VC of T. What about my I1 value? Well, let's put the circuit back the way it was. There's my 40 volts. So I get minus 40 volts here. I have VC here. Voltage across this capacitor. I know what VC is equal to and therefore I1 of T is just equal to minus 40 minus VC of T divided by 20K and therefore that current must be equal to minus 1 minus 2.5 times E to the minus 200T milliamps. And there's I1 of T. So here's my voltage and my current for T greater than zero. And note that I solved for the voltage across the capacitor first, then I solved for I1, given that value of VC. I did not try to use the general solution on the I1. I would not get the right answer. Okay? A couple things to keep in mind. All right? Now notice, for the general solution, I'm no longer thinking about step response or natural response. And that's entirely intentional. Don't worry about natural or forced response before working the problem. This is an important thing. Now that you've learned about the general response and the general solution equation that we've looked at before, now that you've learned about this equation, you should never look at a problem and say to yourself, boy, is this a natural response or is it a forced response or is it a general response? What do I do? It doesn't matter. The same equation works for everything. Simply use the general response equation. So use the general response solution. We want to find VO and find VF. If VO is equal to zero, if the initial condition turns out to be equal to zero, you've got a forced response. If VF, the final condition, turns out to be equal to zero, you have a natural response but you figure that out after the fact. You don't need to waste time thinking about it before you work the problem. Calculate the initial condition, calculate the final condition, calculate tau, and then you're ready. You've got everything you need. And then whether or not it may be forced or natural just falls right out once you work the problem. All right? So here we see plenty of examples. There's a couple of examples now of the general response applied to RC circuits. Now let's look at the step and general response applied to RL circuits. And as you might guess, you're once again going to see how duality in the equations shows, forces a great deal of similarity in the types of equations you're going to see in the types of solutions.